when I say I work from observation, it's actually all of the senses. It's the touch, the feel, the smell, the sound of being there as well as the look. But that being there in the moment is really important. But the imagination and the memory comes out through the drawings that I create. And this is one that I did um, where I was looking at building up the story of the movement through the layers in the piece so that I'm layering on top rather than side by side. So a lot of my design work is drawing and I do an awful lot of my textiles directly from the drawing. There will be planning in between as to how to do it, but these drawings are what underpin my work. Hi, my name is Jen Taylor and I'm one of the students on the fellowship currently. Um, my work is very much based on the landscape and places around about me that I connect with. So generally speaking, I'll start from visiting the place and taking a series of photographs. I find that very often I'm limited for time. So by taking photographs rather than actually drawing in the environment, I can collect the information that I need and have something to work from when I get back. Much of my work is based on places that are matter to me and the local shoreline is somewhere that's very important and that keeps me sane. I think part of what interests me about places are the textures and the surfaces and I like to create papers that evoke memories of the places that I've visited. I tend to also limit the palette somewhat. So although occasionally I'll create papers with quite bright colours, a lot of my work is more based on inks, watercolours, washes. I'll use a variety of different papers from tissue through to quite heavy watercolour papers. Having created all of these surfaces, I then have something to work with. And I like to give myself plenty of choice, as you can see. The next step in the process is to simplify the image for myself. I tend to, if I draw something, I go into a lot of detail. And I find that by creating simple collages and then doing a bit of stitching into those collages, collages, I can simplify what I'm then going to do in my felt work. This part of my design process has also become part of the art I create, as I like these when they're finished and use these as pieces as well. So it's just a method of simplifying the image so that I can then produce further work. Hello, my name's Rachel Battersby and I'm a fellowship student too. I um, have used a few different methods for design and these are my favourite methods at the moment. I have loved working from uh, an image. So my theme is the Scottish islands and Generally, I will take pictures or gather things from the shoreline and pebbles and driftwood and things like that to work from. And then back in the studio, I have really enjoyed using this method of, of boxes for design and taking elements of the visual photographs or the pebbles and stones that I've found around the islands to then fill in the boxes uh, from what I'm seeing. So that's one aspect that I've really enjoyed using and then taking that into my work. I've also enjoyed painting and drawing to music and using vibrant watercolours to do this and then taking those watercolours and using them in collage. 
And this has given me the opportunity to take an image, uh, do something quite busy to begin with, and then start to refine that and make the images much more succinct and less busy. Again, using things like cut and torn collages and starting to work with less colour. So this is an example of using a watercolour, a section of the watercolour, then taking that into a collage technique and then into the felt. And then I've used these threads within my work. And again, going more monotone in black and white. So I've really enjoyed the drawing to music. It's allowed freedom and creativity in what I've been doing and taking that into drawing and then into collage has enabled me to use all those different skills in the work that I've been doing. Oh, hello, I'm Pat Abbott. I'm a fellowship student at Artie Baird and uh, I'd like to show you some of the ways in which I do design. I usually start off from, from photographs of the area that I live, which is on the coast, it's woodland, and uh, there are a lot of trees and they're quite distorted. And I like to alter the, the colour, the colours, the shapes, to give that sense of it being a, a, a landscape that's quite dramatic and under threat, really. From These are some of the designs that um, I've, I've done from the abstract narrative work that we did and these are much more abstract than I usually do but from them I will take uh, I'll do small samples and I'm usually following the colours I'm, I'm usually looking at the colours and the shapes um, that are in the design but I'm not usually doing the the samples directly from the pictures um, as they're made then this is another example of a similar sort of thing where I'll make the samples, but I'll vary them quite a lot in terms of the colours uh, and the shapes and the lines. And I'll work on the samples before I go on to produce bigger work. This is an example of where I've used photographs of the environment itself. But sometimes also I look at artworks like this picture picture from the Canadian Group of Seven and Tom Thompson and then I'll use the colours from the artworks as well as from my own photographs and then I'll make a, I'll make a little sample and um, that's another example of um, the way in which I, I use different sources uh, apart from my own photographs. This one uh, is a sample that I made directly from, from the photographs and a small sketch. I'll use watercolours, pastels, ink tents pens and sometimes ordinary ink, ink pens to get small pictures which I'll then use. And this was the sample that I produced uh, from that. And then I'll sometimes alter the image in the sample like I did in this case making it a, a mosaic felt. Um, you can see a lot of them there's tree themes and uh, I always end up coming back to to the tree themes and again it's photographs, small sketches and um, works in pastel and then I'll do I'll do a little felt sample and then I'll add in some stitch um, for texture and when I'm doing the design work sometimes I'm adding the 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 te the the sort of textures and stitches that I'm looking at into the small pictures that I'm making just to see if they work really and again this is another example of that um, where I've, I've done the small uh, design samples but I've done quite a lot of stitching um, which I've, I've represented on the design work by the dotted areas.
This is another one where I've, I've, I've used more artwork. I get this is again from the, the Canadian group of seven artists. Um, and and then I, I will make a small sample and then with a, I'll use that uh, as part of the design work and then next time I'll do a much bigger uh, I'll do a much bigger piece but I'll have learned some I'll have learned some techniques by the, from the small sample in terms of what the design works uh, or not for instance in this case uh, the original design um, was a, a landscape piece and it didn't quite work um, so I cut it in half and turned it into two samples and it wor worked much better from its composition as two separate pieces and then using the small samples and uh, in, in the design process enables me to see what works before I make a much bigger mistake. I'm Hilary Porter and I'm a fellowship student. Design for me has always been a difficulty. It's not something I do naturally as a set process. Um, my years at Artie Bird have been interesting as far as design goes because some of it I've loved and some of it I haven't enjoyed quite so much, but all of it's within me. I um, use that knowledge and understanding all the time, but it hasn't developed for me into a particular process. Some things that we do at Artie Bird, I find very useful in working out what I'm going to do with a piece. Uh, one of them was the abstract narrative process where you see the result of what I did before you. It's a process whereby you use different materials and different medium and layer using different focuses. So each time you're putting a layer on, you're thinking about something different, um, like rhythm or line um, or shape. And the way I can use this in my work is to put blanks over it to find certain patterns and things that speak to me particularly. So this is a rather large one. Um, I make three, um, everything I make now is 3D. So it could be a vessel or it could just be a, a sort of sculptural piece. Um, but using the blanks, I can see areas that I could use in maybe creating some um, texture or shape or colour. I don't use this for every time I work. My work is very, comes very much from within me. So I will show you a couple of things that I do use as inspiration and in design. I use a lot of rocks and shells. I love the seashore and this is where a lot of my work comes from. Um, I can use rocks in very different ways or for very different focuses. It could be colour, it can be line, as you can see, it can be the shape, or it can be the natural cavities that occur when either animals have made that or just general wearing away, and lines. I get my inspiration from all sorts of places. Charity shops are a big thing for me. I love trawling through and picking things that speak to me just from the texture of it or the colour um, or the, the way it shines in the light. This is a scarf I picked up. I just fell in love with the colours on it and I have used this um, in a piece and I will probably use it more um, again and again in pieces. Um, and um, 
I've used not only the colours, but the design of it, the striping. Hello everybody, I'm Sue Turnbull and I'm a fellowship student at Artie Bird and I'm a tapestry weaver. I work from various different sources for design work, but my main one is finding a place or something that strikes me as being really interesting. Um, so my theme at the moment is anything Icelandic. And while on holiday once, we came across this little town called Isafjorda. And within the town, there was this amazing building, which was a shed. And the shed uh, really took my interest. It was so interesting with all its rust and peeling paint and wood. So I took lots and lots of photographs and I think most of my design work or most of the things that I do tend to be based from photographs. I take lots of photographs and work with those. I love mark making, um, so I found that the areas of rust and metal and weather-worn wood gave me great interest. So what I tend to do then is to transfer the things that interest me onto bits of paper and I will use um, any medium really, uh, oil pastels, watercolours, acrylic ink, and I'll replicate some of the mark that I see on the photographs that I take. So I make my own brushes, and as you can see here on this one, I've made the marks um, with a homemade brush, which I've done by taking fisherman's rope that I found on the shore and separating the plastic fibres out and making my own brush with it and then dipping it into ink and making some more marks on the paperwork. I think I'm quite attracted to verticals and horizontals and I haven't realised that until I started doing more design work. And the little dots, I just adored the little rusted heads of the screws and the nails in the woodwork. Over time, I made hundreds and hundreds of studies and took great delight in looking at all of them but actually managed to whittle it down to one which I really, really liked the most. And that's the one that's in the picture frame now. I used masking to mask off areas of it to really focus in on the detail and home in on the marks that were there. And again, just out of that one piece of paper, I came up with hundreds and hundreds of different areas which really appealed to me. So I took photographs of all those and the photographs have gone into this book. Here's some more and again the little rust rusted nail heads appear on pretty much every every one so I just adore mark making. The other thing that I would do would be to get a really large piece of paper. So you can get some rolls from Ikea and that you get really, really long pieces of paper and just mark make to my heart's content using resists, wax, washes, brush marks. Um, and again, focusing in on the areas of that or cutting, cutting um, the pages up. Here are photographs of the large piece of paper that I did. Again, moving into the various aspects of the mark making, homing in on areas that I particularly liked and those that really sp spoke Iceland to me or Iceland beaches. And I went in and took more photographs, enlarged them and created all sorts of different views.